The U.S. Geological Survey measures stream flow at thousands of stations across the country. This presentation is a very brief overview of the methods used to monitor stream flow. The actual process is fairly complex. This is Training Module 4.02a for the Stochastic Empirical Loading and Dilution Model Seldom. This presentation has 18 slides and will take about 8 minutes. It was prepared by the U.S. Geological Survey in cooperation with the Federal Highway Administration. This training module has four learning objectives. At the end of this module, you should be able to describe the availability of stream flow data, describe the components of a flow measurement, describe the method for estimating flow from measured stream stage, and describe the components of a stream gauge. The USGS is currently monitoring stream flow at about 14,600 sites and has daily data for about 26,300 sites and has individual measurements for about 56,000 sites. Daily mean stream flow monitoring stations are known as stream gauges. This map shows the location of current stream gauges as gray dots and about 11,700 inactive stream gauges as red dots. The USGS uses stream stage measurements to estimate flows by using a relationship between stage and flow. At most sites, the monitoring station and the stage discharge relation need constant maintenance by visiting hydrographers. This schematic diagram shows the method used to determine stream flow. The stream is divided into sections. Then the width, depth, and average velocity of each section is measured. The total stream flow is the area weighted sum of the sections. This picture shows a hydrographer making discharge measurements in a weightable stream. The yellow line is a tape stretched across the stream to keep the readings aligned and to demark the different measurement sections. A spinning propeller or an acoustic sensor is used to measure flow manually in each section. The USGS has adopted acoustic velocity profilers because they can provide robust and detailed measurements of depth, width, and velocity. This graph shows distance across the stream on the horizontal axis, stream depth on the vertical axis, and flow velocity using the color ramp from purple at zero to red at six cubic feet per second. This graph indicates how the acoustic velocity profiler can provide channel geometry and velocity at the same time. Furthermore, multiple measurements are taken and the results calculated for each pass across the stream. Larger streams require more imaginative solutions than small weightable streams. This picture shows a discharge measurement being taken from a cable car by using an acoustic Doppler current profiler. Measurements are made from bridges for streams of many different sizes. This picture shows a hydrographer making a discharge measurement from a bridge during a flood by using an acoustic Doppler current profiler. Boats are used to measure flows on the largest rivers. This picture shows a discharge measurement being taken from the boat during the 2011 Mississippi River floods. Multiple measurements are used to develop a rating curve between measured stage and discharge. This schematic diagram shows how multiple measurements are used to develop a rating curve between measured stage, which is the water level in the stream, and discharge, which is the stream flow. These rating curves are used so that measurements of stream stage, which are fairly easy to automate at high frequency, can be translated into stream flow estimates. Calibrating and verifying this relationship is a constant and ongoing process as the stream channel geometry varies and changes with debris, ice, scour, and deposition. Once a rating is established, continuous measurements at the stream gauge can be used to provide online, real-time data this schematic diagram shows a stream gauge with a stilling well next to the stream. A float assembly is used to measure the distance from the pulley to the water surface in the stilling well. The stilling well is used to protect the float assembly and dampen surface flow oscillations. The stilling well is connected to the stream by multiple intake pipes. The objects that look like partially submerged rulers are staff gauges used to manually check the water level. Gauges with stilling wells have inside and outside staff gauges to ensure that the stilling well matches the river level. In this type of gauge, the float line is connected to a pulley that turns a shaft. In the old days, this would move a pen on a paper chart. Today, movement of the pulley is translated to an electronic signal by a digital shaft encoder, and the signal is recorded by a battery-powered data collection platform. 
The gray polygon mounted on the side of the gauge is a solar panel which is used to recharge the battery that is powering the electronics at a site without electric power. The device next to the solar panel is the antenna. Many stream gauges transmit data to satellites several times a day. Increasingly, stream gauges use cellular phones to transmit data, especially when high-frequency communications are desired. This schematic diagram shows a stream gauge with a gas pressure system. In this type of gauge, gas is bubbled out of an orifice near the bottom of the stream and the amount of pressure needed to maintain flow of the gas indicates the depth of water above the orifice. A non-submersible pressure transducer is used to translate pressure measurements to an electronic record of stream stage. As with the previous stream gauge, the electronics are powered by a solar battery system and measurement results are transmitted via satellite or cell phone. This stream gauge has an outside staff gauge mounted to the stream that is used to manually check the water level to help calibrate the pressure sensor measurement. This schematic diagram shows a stream gauge with a submersible pressure transducer. In this type of gauge, the water pressure measured by the transducer indicates the depth of water which is recorded to produce an electronic record of stream stage. As with the previous stream gauge, the electronics are powered by a solar battery system and measurement results are transmitted via satellite or cell phone. This stream gauge also has an outside staff gauge mounted in the stream that is used to manually check the water level to help calibrate the pressure sensor measurement. This schematic diagram shows a stream gauge with a radar level sensor that is used to measure stream stage by measuring the distance from the radar unit to the water surface. This type of gauge is designed to be used for measuring stage from a bridge, usually when the distance to the water is large. As with the previous stream gauge, the electronics are powered by a solar battery system and measurement results are transmitted via satellite or cell phone. It is not shown, but this type of stream gauge will have a staff gauge mounted in the stream that is used to manually check the water level to help calibrate the radar unit. This schematic diagram shows the satellite links from the gauging station to the online NWIS web servers and our computers. Final data are checked and verified, but provisional data are provided in near real time. We use the approved record to calculate streamflow statistics for use with Zeldom. In this module, we learn that the USGS is currently monitoring streamflow at about 14,600 sites known as stream gauges. It has daily data for about 26,300 sites and has individual streamflow measurements for more than 56,000 sites. Streamflow is the product of area, width times depth, and average velocity in many subsections. A discharge rating curve is used to estimate streamflow for measured stream stage. A stream gauge consists of a stage monitoring device and data recorder. Most gauges also include a data transmitter to provide near real-time flow values and to help optimize the operation and maintenance of the gauge.